fellow collectors and welcome to Long's Toys. Today we are taking a look at an assortment of DC Spin Master figures from various lines. Uh, over here on the left we have Adam Smasher from the Black Adam line. Originally I was going to save this for the one day when I actually find Dr. Fate, but it's getting to the point where I don't think that's very likely and I'm kind of surprised I even found Adam Smasher, so I decided to just throw him in with the rest of these. Now this one I actually found at Target but everything else was found at Walmart. My Target really doesn't stock these anymore, with the exception of these kind of still hanging around from when the movie came out. But the rest of this line seems to have completely dried up at Target, at least in my area. So all of these other ones were found at Walmart. Uh, next up, we have Solomon Grundy. I think he looks fantastic. I'm really excited for this figure. The bigger ones, I feel like uh, Spin Master does even better because the joints are a little bit bigger, so they're kind of tougher and nice, solid figures. And uh, Adam Smasher has the two accessories very uh, visible in the packaging. These figures all have the kind of mystery accessories, um, which you get three in here, and you kind of have to pull this open. I'll just do it. Why don't we just show this off real quick so you can see how this works you just kind of pop this open and you can see that they're all in here so it looks like he comes with a little ball and chain there this is some kind of like piece of concrete on a stick for him to use as a club and then we get another chain so sometimes the accessories are kind of specific to the figure and sometimes they're just a little generic especially when it's like batman or one of the bat family you kind of just get generic batarangs and things like that and here's a little breakdown of this wave as you can see they're really just kind of pumping out repaints of Batman, the Joker, and Robin at this point. We got two actually new figures here in Red Hood and Solomon Grundy. And then we got a new repaint of Batgirl, which I'm actually fine with because there's only been one of her so far. And that was kind of the Batgirl of Burnside, which is a great color scheme for a costume. But this one's a little bit more traditional, just kind of black and gold, which I think looks pretty cool. So here is Solomon Grundy. Here's the Batgirl I was talking about with the black and gold. And then here is the Red Hood. And this is even kind of an interesting design for Red Hood. Uh, he's got kind of like a mask, like a ninja mask, and then like a hood. Usually he's just got like a completely red head that he had. I mean, I'm not describing that well, but this is an interesting look. So, I mean, the figure looks cool, but not kind of the traditional design for Red Hood. And then all the way in the back here is a Lex Luthor. Now, Lex Luthor did come out in the kind of basic DC assortment a long time ago, but I was never able to find one. So as you can see, they are re-releasing the figures in this kind of new design packaging. Still has the three like accessories here on the back, but this is a nice opportunity if there's any you missed. So they've kind of re-released a lot of the earlier figures in this new packaging. And I found these at Walmart right now. They have those kind of long aisles in the center with the little boxes for like stocking stuffer. Uh, type of presents and they're usually kind of you know small or cheap things and they have a big bin of these there's Lex Luthor there's uh I don't think there's Batman there's Lex Luthor there's Superman there's Wonder Woman and Aquaman and then my friend Corey said he even saw a Shazam at one point so if you're missing any of the earlier figures definitely a good opportunity to check out Walmart uh in those middle like stocking stuffer aisle displays they have and there's a lot of these. There were tons of Lex Luthor, and I've been trying to hunt him down for quite some time, unsuccessfully. So I was very happy to finally add him to the collection. So I'm going to go ahead, get all of these out of the packaging here, and then we'll take a closer look. All right, so here are the five figures out of the packaging. We'll start over here on the left with Adam Smasher. He looks good. Honestly, I think the paint applications and everything are really nice. The head sculpt's okay. I feel like the eyes are a little too small. And for whatever reason, the head does not want to move. Like, it moves that much, and then it feels like if I push it any farther, I'm going to tear it off, and I do not want to do that. So, not really a lot of uh, in terms of articulation there for the head. Mine is just stuck. I'm sure it's not supposed to be, but it is. You have the hinge there in the shoulder, the rotation hinge, and a rotation here in the elbow. Uh, arm is one solid piece, so no wrist articulation or anything like that. But you have some nice detail and paints there on the forearm. Nice belt all the way around, but no waist articulation. Now, unfortunately, the Black Adam figures have these weird hips where they kick out to the side, but you can't just bring them forward. If you want, you have to turn it like this and then have them kick forward like this, which is really awkward. It's kind of the way the Vintage Collection used to do things, and I hate it. Um, also, they're kind of really loose, which is a shame. 
Then you have a hinge and a rotation here at the knee, and then just like the elbow down to the wrist, you have from the knee down to the foot is one solid piece. But again, nice detail, nice paint applications. I think aesthetically the figure looks good. I just hate the way the hips are done, and I'm bummed that the head on mine won't move side to side. Not a huge problem, like I can just have his head looking forward, but you know, I don't like limited articulation. Now he comes with two accessories. He's got these gloves and Spin Master has done this a lot and I hate the way they do this. So you have this glove. I would much rather this just like clip around and just kind of friction to the arm. And that way the hands would be orientated in the same exact way. But instead you're supposed to put this peg through the fist so that turns the orientation of his fist 90 degrees. And so he has to have the hand like he's given out a fist bump. And if you try to change it, you'd have to rotate this, like straighten out the arm and rotate this. And then it just looks weird. Plus he doesn't even hold it that well. So I don't really care for these accessories. I mean, they're done in kind of a translucent blue plastic, which looks nice, but I hate the way they put the peg here. I would much rather they just make this a little bit tighter, no peg, and just have it friction over the arms. I think that could work. I really don't think that would be a problem to just have it friction onto the arms. I would much rather do that. I guess technically I could cut the peg out of there, but I would need this to be just a little bit tighter. Maybe if I heated it up with a hair dryer or something and then pushed it in. I don't know. I'm not willing to go to that much effort. The accessories just aren't that great in the first place because they're just large blue arms. But I don't think they're that great. So I think the figure aesthetically looks good. Articulation, for the most part, is good. Except for the messed up head on mine. But otherwise, he looks good. Let's move on to Batgirl. Because unfortunately, my Batgirl has the exact same problem with the head. The head does not want to move. You can kind of see it immediately. Like You can tell I'm bending plastic there. Like I'm not moving anything in the joint. That is bending plastic. But the head sculpt is nice, and I think it's nicely painted. The eyes look decent. They're a little too far out to the side, but for the most part, I think they're painted nicely. The orange hair looks good. The bat symbol's nice. All of the uh, gold, I think, looks good. And they did the joints out of black plastic, so they don't succumb to gold plastic syndrome, which I appreciate. The cape on the back is nice. It has the cutout, so if you want to use the peg hole in the back... You can do so without having to move the cape, which I appreciate. And it's the same articulation. Hinge and a rotation, hinge and a rotation. Now, these figures have the normal ball joint. It's just the Black Adam figures. I don't know why. You can see you can kick out to the side. You can kick forward. It's just a typical ball joint. No problem whatsoever. That's how they've done all their figures up until the Black Adam line. And they're still doing it with the regular Batman line. So I don't know why they changed it for Black Adam. I'm hoping that was just something they tried. And then they stop and go back to sticking with the ball joint because there's no reason it can't just be a ball joint. Look how well that works. Kick out to the side. Nice fluid movement and kick forward. No problem. It's perfect. No problem whatsoever. You have a thigh swivel as well. So that doesn't even have a thigh swivel. It just has the weird hip. This has a nice ball joint and a thigh swivel. And then the typical bend and rotation there at the knee. So, really nice figure, with the exception of the head being a little stuck, but again, not a huge problem. I don't need to, and these figures don't have a ton of movement anyway. You know, you maybe get, like, maybe 45 degree angle uh, head tilt in either direction, so I'm not missing out on much. It's still a good looking figure. Accessory-wise, also kind of bland. Uh, when I mentioned earlier, the Bat family comes with generic Batarang. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So this is a ridiculously large Batarang. You also get a katana, and then you get a grappling hook, but I guess to be a variant, this one's been spray-painted. Ha 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 by the Joker. All right, really? You got me, Joker. You, you painted my grappling hook. Zing. So, again, accessories, not that great, but the figure's good. I think it looks nice. Nice paint applications, great articulation. Bit of a bummer that the, the head's a little messed up. That's got to be just a QC issue. And it's funny because I don't usually have QC issue, uh, QC issues with Spin Master figures. They're usually pretty solid. So that's surprising that out of, you know, two out of five random ones that I open, I have two that where the head doesn't want to move. So hopefully it's not a trend going forward. But 
Otherwise, it's a really solid figure, but the accessories that come with it are kind of stupid, in my opinion. Very, very generic accessories. I don't know what you would make specific for Batgirl, but just something a little better. <laughs> All right, so we'll do Red Hood next. Um, It's a fine figure. I mean, he looks okay. Not the typical design I usually think of with Red Hood. He kind of just looks like a generic red ninja or kind of even looks like the phantasm if i'm being honest but uh head can actually turn on this one now you can see this is what i'm missing out on with the other two a slight turn to that side and a slight turn to that side so that's when i say it's not really that big of a deal i'm not missing out on much otherwise he's got typical articulation he's got the hinge there in the shoulder and the rotation hinge and rotation in the elbow and knee he's got the nice ball joint in the hip thigh swivel so Really appreciate that. It's a solid figure. I mean, honestly, it's got some nice detailing down here in the boots, the pants, the gloves. They they have really nice detailing all around the figure. The paint applications are always good. So these are solid little figures. Uh, Accessory-wise, again, kind of another dud in my opinion. He's got two katana. Sure, I guess. He does look like a generic ninja. Uh, we've got a crowbar accessory, which, I mean, you know, someone could use this. One of my... Four-inch figures could get a use out of a generic crowbar, I guess. Some use to this. And then we've got this thing. I don't know what this thing is. Um, is it a gun of some kind? Is this supposed to be like a, a trigger he holds on to? My best guess is it's some kind of like, almost like a tonfa weapon that kind of resembles Batman's gauntlet. And he's supposed to hold it like that. And then these are kind of like, you know, sharpened blades. And then he can hit people with it. I don't know. It's a weird accessory. I don't really quite know what it is. And to make matters worse, it's been spray painted by the Joker. So it's completely unusable now. So that's what we do with that. I mean, he should come with two guns. I feel like the Red Hood always has like two handguns. I'm assuming they just can't do that in this line because it's more uh, oriented to younger audiences. But you could probably just get him from a G.I. Joe figure or something and, and hook him up. Um, yeah, the, I guess I'll give him I'll give him a katana. Why not? Let's give him... I mean, the katanas are not bad. They're not terrible accessories. They're just very bland and generic. I mean, they're done in this gray. They're not really that long. They just kind of look boring, in my opinion. I don't know. They're just They're just not really that exciting, but, you know, he's got them. So watch out. All right, now let's move on to a high quality figure, Solomon Grundy. This guy is amazing. Love the head sculpt. That is hilarious. He's got the hair. He's got the beady little eyes. He's got the angry sneer. That is fantastic. Head moves probably the most of anybody, even though I don't really need it to move at all. He's got really solid hinge joints here in the shoulder. I kind of wish... There was something they could do. He's got this, like, you know, torn part of his shirt here. And I get they can't really paint the joint because that would flake over time. So there's not really much they can do uh, because it's such a solid hinge joint there. They kind of just had to go around it. There's not really anything they could do to continue the shirt pattern on there. I get it. It looks a little weird, but it's not that big a deal. Nice, solid hinge in the elbow as well as a rotation. Again, one solid uh, piece there for the forearm. But... Really nice giant clobber in time uh, fists. Oh, sorry, clobber in time. That's wrong property. Uh, he's got nice hinges here. Really nice kick out to the side. Kick forward. He's got a thigh swivel. Now, with the bigger figures, they don't have knees. Because they're so big and because it has to uh, sustain the weight. And he's obviously... he's This is a hefty boy. He's a lot chunkier because he's got all this weight up here in the top. So they don't give him knees. Uh, but he's got a thigh swivel and that's it. I don't miss the knees. I'll be honest with you. I don't really care. Really great detailing. He's got all these like little stitches around. Really nicely done. The shorts or pants, whatever, torn pants, whatever you want to call them. All painted very nicely. The shirt underneath here. Just this guy is a solid figure. Nice, solid chunk. Really great. Nice articulation. Great paint applications. Just all around. Easily one of my favorites from this set of five. His accessories, again, not really that great. So he's got these, like, ball and chains. I'm assuming some kind of shackles, like he broke out of somewhere. 
But the problem is they clip, first of all, they almost don't even fit around his wrist because I don't think they were made for this figure. They're all about reusing accessories. But they kind of don't hang normally. Like, unless you have the hand or the arm all the way down at his side, they don't make sense. Like, if he had his hands up like this, this should be at a 90 degree angle because that's how gravity works. And he's not firing the chain out like it's a gun, so I don't really understand this design. It's kind of like the same problem with the stupid glove things all over again, because you put the connector at the wrong place, and so now everything's at a weird angle. So you get two of these, one for each. I guess I could try to put them around. No, you know what? They don't even fit. But even, well, I guess they kind of do. But again... This doesn't make any sense. What is he walking around on them like they're stilts? I don't know what's going on there. So again, blah, terrible accessories. He comes with this like piece of rebar with some concrete. You know, like he pulled this out of a building he demolished and he's using it as a club. I can get behind this. Like, I think that's fine. That's kind of a decent design. Um, you know, the, the color plastic they chose is kind of boring and washes out. There's a lot of molded in detail. But it's all kind of washed out because of the color plastic they chose. This could definitely use a black wash or something to really bring out that detail. But again, I get why that didn't happen. But this is a decent accessory. I mean, he's you know he's a big guy. He smashes things. He pulled this out of the wreckage of a building and he's using it as a club. Okay, I can get behind that. That's a decent accessory. So, so far, he's easily winning the accessories with one usable good accessory. And then last, but certainly not least, we have the man who has everything, Lex Luthor, in his suit. I was happy to finally be able to find this guy because I've been looking for him for, it feels like, years at this point. Um, but this is a good figure. I mean, really great design, a ton of molded-in detail, great paint applications. The green and the purple look great together. You have some kind of gunmetal gray to kind of break it up, a little bit of yellow there. The face sculpt, I think, looks really solid. Really nice. I mean, honestly, I don't really have any complaints with this guy. Well, some joints are a little loose, but it's really not an issue. He has no problem standing. I wouldn't even really call it that much of a complaint. Really nice movement there on the head. Hinge. He's got the same articulation as everybody else. But it all works. It looks good. Really solid figure. He has the ball joint. Now, this is, again, a reissue of an older figure. So that's why he has the ball joints and this is a reissue as well. These two are new and they have ball joints, so I hope that's the norm going forward. I still don't really know why the Black Adam figures got those weird hips. But this is a solid figure. And let me tell you something. Lex wins the accessories hands down. Easily. So he's got this little cannon that has a peg to peg onto his back. So it's like he's produced an over-the-shoulder cannon from his armor. That's great. I mean, that's amazing. I think that looks really good. Really nicely detailed. It pegs in very easily there. Looks over the shoulder perfectly. I like that a lot. I think that is a really cool accessory. Really, really well done there. Uh, the other thing he gets is this kind of like... I don't know. Axe. Metal axe. Robotic axe. Whatever you want to call this. But the colors match his suit. Like, I think they actually match the color purple to the paint there pretty well. So I'm okay with this. I appreciate that the color of the weapon actually matches his suit and his color uh, palette here, his motif. I'm okay with that. I mean, it's a little generic, a little bit of a boring axe, but okay. Now, he's got this gigantic gauntlet. It does suffer from the same problem of the peg being in the wrong spot. But this thing is so big, there was really no way you were going to friction this onto his arm. And so he's got this massive gauntlet. It's almost, I envision like his armor being able to change, um, you know, nanotechnology and whatnot, kind of like Iron Man. And he just grows this giant gauntlet with what I assume is a large piece of kryptonite. Now, it would have been nice if they could have painted the kryptonite a different color. I understand why they couldn't. But he just kind of produces this giant fist with this like kryptonite dagger to take out Superman. That's a pretty cool accessory. And again, it's painted in a color that matches the suit so it doesn't seem out of place. I think that's pretty cool. So like I said, I think he wins the accessories hands down. Very, very cool accessories for him. But that's one out of five. And that's not that great. 
And that's kind of been my problem with this line. I mean, I really like this line. From the very beginning, I was very excited for it. They're good figures. I think they have an amazing amount of detail, paint application, the sculpt work, everything about these guys, the capes, everything works. The figures are good, especially for the price, because these are still like just south of $10 a piece, especially for like Grundy, who's a bigger, heftier figure. But he's not a higher price point. So I think these are still really solid figures. The accessories have always been kind of boring. Some of them are great. Some of them work. In the beginning, I was like, oh, I got a Batarang. I got a grappling hook. This is standard stuff that Batman uses. After you collect this line for a while, you have 30 grappling hooks and 50 Batarangs. And they don't get inventive. And they just put the same... Like, these three accessories are almost standard for any kind of Bat person. You know, anyone in the Bat family is getting... At least two out of the three of these. And it's just, it's boring. It's been done. It needs to be shaken up a little bit. They need to do something new accessory-wise. I've gotten these for King Shark and Killer Croc and Grundy. And they weren't that good the first time. And now I've got a ton of these. Okay, I can, I can work with this. This is kind of cool. Okay, a crowbar. It's something. If I have some kind of generic thief, uh, you know, figures that I want Batman to take down, they could be trying to use a crowbar for something. Most of the accessories are kind of bland, and that's kind of a bummer, and they're always one solid color for the most part. I mean, the most paint applications we get on weapons is when the Joker's up to no good, and that's not really doing anything for me. I'm sorry. I, he spray-painted my grappling hook. Does it still work? Can it still grapple? I don't really care if he spray-painted it. Not quite the flex he thinks it is. So, this line has always been pretty great figures, mediocre accessories at best. Some land, some don't. Most don't. Uh, but the figures are pretty good. And I still think for what they cost, you can't really beat it. I mean, the Fortnite figures that Jazz Wears is doing are even more articulation, even more sculpt work and paint applications and better accessories. So I still think they're kind of the undisputed king right now in 4-inch figures for the price. Um, these are a close second. I think they... They're good figures. The other thing that's kind of depressing, they haven't done much with this line for a long time. We got like four figures and a couple of vehicles for the Batman movie. We got five figures and like one vehicle for Black Adam. We finally saw a new wave here for Batman and we got, you know, two new figures, one decent repaint and then just a, like the sixth Joker repaint and the eighth Robin repaint and the 59th Batman repaint. They need to come up with some new stuff. DC has hundreds of characters they could be doing. And they're still just giving us five Batmans per wave. I understand it's a Batman line. You need to have Batman in every wave. I'm fine with that. Even two. We don't need three, four, five Batmans per wave. We don't need a Robin in every wave. We don't need a Joker in every wave. Switch it up a little bit. Batman's got a very extensive rogue gallery. Grundy's not even really, I mean, not specifically part of Batman's Rogue Gallery, but I appreciate it. He's a great figure, great character. Happy he got made. Keep going in that direction, please. So, rant over. These are pretty good figs for the price. Accessories are, you know, mostly miss, but some are pretty good. But I still think they're worth picking up. I still think there's definitely fun to be had here. I just wish they would give us more. I wish they would stop rehashing the same accessories stop rehashing the same batman figure over and over again and just give us more characters there's so much that they could do from the dc library of characters and also stay away from these terrible hips please thank you all right let me know what you guys think in the comments below please like share and subscribe hope you guys enjoyed the video and as always thanks so much for watching